A small piece of sporting history was made on the 3rd of December 2019 when Premier League games were shown in the UK exclusively live on a legal digital stream for the first time. Amazon have paid around £90 million to show 20 games each season for three years on Prime Video. They kept things simple and familiar, deploying dozens of well-known and dependable anchors, pundits and commentators for their opening set of matches. Now, inevitably, there were hiccups, with some viewers reporting intermittent feeds and lagging issues, but it was largely smooth. And when Amazon later announced record sign-ups and millions of viewers, hugely significant. The future of football broadcasting is digital, of that there is little doubt. The main questions are, how rapid will the transformation be? Who will be the biggest winners? Will tech firms become major rights holders? And... If the Premier League launch an over-the-top OTT service, streaming direct to fans and keeping all the revenues, can they cut out traditional broadcasters, or will the paying customer be the main beneficiary? Perhaps one day, it'll be all three. At the beginning of the third decade of the 21st century, the Premier League continues to enjoy growth in broadcasting income that has been simply staggering since the revamped top division began in 1992-93. The first five-year TV deal from 92 to 97 was worth £50.7 million for domestic live rights, highlights and all foreign rights combined. Foreign rights were worth £40 million in total for those first five years, or £8 million a year. Now, in the current 2019 to 2022 cycle, the total rights income has grown to £3.1 billion per year, of which £1.4 billion a year comes from foreign rights. That £3 billion per year in broadcasting income this season, 2019-20, will translate into the average Premier League club earning around £135 million from central PL funds alone in May, before a ticket, pie or replica shirt is sold, before any kit supply or sponsorship deal is done, before any other income from European competition or the domestic cups is added. Yet that broadcasting income could conceivably be higher, much higher. As things stand, there are roughly 200 million people around the world paying significant sums to pay TV operators for access to channels that provide them with Premier League football. In many, if not all cases, the Premier League is the big draw. In the UK, Sky have around 6 million football subscribers, who typically pay £45 a month upwards for packages including the sports channels. BT Sport have almost 2 million customers and it's not known how many Amazon Prime subscribers, of 15 million in the UK, signed up for Premier League football, but Amazon say that large numbers did. On top of the 200 million worldwide who have access to the Premier League via pay-per-view, hundreds of millions more watch on free terrestrial platforms. Now, if a UK fan wants to access the three broadcasters who together now show all of the 200 Premier League live games this season, the cheapest deals cost around £907 per year, or £76 a month. So, for demonstration purposes only, let's imagine that there's a dedicated Premier League channel, and let's call it Premflix. It has vast archives of more than 16,000 hours of all the 11,000 PL matches since 1992, a searchable clip database to access more than 28,000 goals, and a supporting bank of magazine shows and previews, interviews and news shows. And importantly, it provides access to every Premier League game, live, on smart TVs, tablets, phones and laptops. And you could have all of that for £12 a month. And if you subscribe for a year, you don't pay £144, let's say you pay £120 a year. And now imagine that of the 200 million people currently paying between 15 and 76 pounds a month to watch Premier League games in Europe, Asia, Africa or the Americas, decide to subscribe to Premflix for 10 pounds a month instead, and that others currently not subscribing due to the high prices also follow their lead. Imagine that 200 million people sign up to the 10 pounds a month deal. That 3 billion a year in TV broadcasting income for the Premier League now becomes 24 billion. The average Premier League team's share grows from £135 million this season to just north of £1 billion per club per season. Now, we shouldn't assume, of course, that £10 would be the right price point. It will almost certainly differ across different markets. And maybe there would be other options, such as paying £2 per individual game or £5. 
You could buy a highlights and clips only subscription for half the full price. You might pay 50p to watch the last half an hour of a game still in the balance. The options would be limitless, choice would be key. But ultimately, the salient point is that potentially, by going direct to consumers, the Premier League could earn significantly more money by giving fans significantly more content for less money. Of course, there are still hurdles to overcome. Currently, by selling all rights to external broadcasters, the Premier League is banking guaranteed income and letting those broadcasters around the world produce coverage tailored to their viewers. If the Premier League became a global service provider, it would need to change from being merely the organiser of a competition that oversees 380 football matches each year into a worldwide broadcasting company that can also build and maintain a complex tech platform that could smoothly serve a whole planet without glitches and deal directly with hundreds of millions of customers in hugely diverse continents, languages and cultures. But the Premier League actually already runs a global TV channel, Premier League Productions, which produces studio shows and commentaries in English and is used off the shelf in some rights-holding territories. But a truly global Premflix would need to be not just one channel, but dozens. Premflix UK might well be everything required for customers in the British Isles and assorted pockets of other markets with the familiar anchors, pundits and commentators, but Premflix UK won't necessarily work in America, where Premflix USA would need to deliver the comfort, continuity and local nuances that NBC have worked so hard to deliver successfully over four years of their Premier League's rights stewardship. Neither would Premflix UK be a big seller across the channel, where Premflix France will need to be in French and be delivered with the same panache and joie de vivre of Canal Plus and RMC, with pundits standing at high tables, intellectualising about what the game means for Le Bleu. Now, it's possible that a single Premflix South America would be sufficient for a lot of that continent, although Premflix Brazil would need to be in Portuguese and not Spanish, and would benefit from the presence of Paulo Andrade, currently the figurehead of the SPN Brazil's Premier League coverage. On and on we could go, making a wish list of established local news names who currently deliver the Premier League product in this country or that, and are currently employed by successful legacy broadcasters and incumbent Premier League rights holders. A theoretically successful Premflix would probably require a wholesale recruitment of many of those hundreds of familiar anchors, pundits and commentators. It wouldn't be an impossible task, but it would be a huge one. And while it's not really feasible to deliver a fully global Prem Flix in one go, it's entirely possible that the Premier League could start testing its own over-the-top service in certain territories from 2022. Singapore could perhaps be an ideal location, and indeed it was mooted for the current's rights cycle before the rights stayed with telecoms firm Singtel for 2019-22. Singtel provides a superb example of how having Premier League content can help a broadcaster grow. Since winning the rights in 2010, subscriber numbers to Singtel's pay TV sports offering have grown from 155,000 customers to more than 425,000. Singtel pays the Premier League about £70 million per year for live rights in Singapore and earns almost £175 million annually from those 425,000 customers, paying £34 per month each. Premflix Singapore potentially offers the Premier League a chance to bank the £105 million difference, minus the costs. Rights holders in most places could then earn additional income from selling licenses to pubs, clubs, hotels and other public viewing spaces such as gyms. Sky in the UK makes around £350 million per year from this alone, on top of the £3.6 billion approximately that they make from UK football subscribers. And then there's advertising revenue and sponsorship revenue from particular parts of the programming. Sky's Premier League related revenue each year is north of £4 billion, and the rights costs them £1.193 billion a year. Already, the Premier League is seen in some places via OTT services run by third parties. OTT sports firm DayZen has the rights currently in Canada, Jamaica, and Spain, and Eleven Sports has them in Taiwan. Now that Amazon has become the first of the global tech goliaths to hold Premier League live rights in the UK, the game is really changing. So, the next chapter in this story could go one of multiple ways. One of the tech giants could easily afford to offer the Premier League twice what they currently earn per year from all rights for exclusive global rights to every Premier League match. That would cost them £6 billion a year. But they are already vast digital firms with marketing and customer service capabilities to match. Amazon has cash reserves of more than £30 billion. Facebook has £40 billion. Apple have £78 billion. 
Google's parent company has 90 billion. Now, they could buy the lot, reward the Premier League handsomely and still make a profit, or they could dabble in some areas and leave others. There's been talk for nearly 20 years that the Premier League bubble is about to burst. In fact, in a digital age handled imaginatively, it might barely have started inflating. Thank you.